Nope. What's your favorite part of Christmas? Is it the toe-tapping music we can all sing along to? Perhaps the classic films that always give us a sense of comfort? I'm sure there are a select few who love the colder weather. All those things can be nice. But for me, I loved the food. In particular, Christmas cookies. At least, I used to. I grew up in the small town of Rocky Hill, Connecticut, a suburb just outside of Hartford. It was a time before everyone had smartphones and Netflix. A lot of our news and entertainment was shared via word of mouth. Being a child at the time, I was always hearing different rumors about the various folks around town. One that always stuck out to me was the alleged story behind one of our oldest residents, Helen Harrison. The murmurings amongst my classmates was that Helen was a witch. Actually, that was the common denominator of the rumors. I would occasionally hear new additions to the story, like Helen was actually hundreds of years old, and that she would steal neighborhood pets for use during satanic rituals. Being only eight years old at the time, I was quick to believe almost everything I heard. The rumors really escalated around Halloween, when the older high school kids would double down on the creative new tales. They eventually began to vandalize her home on the days leading up to All Hallows Eve, throwing eggs, draping toilet paper, and even spraying graffiti. I would walk home from school with my friends, and we would pass by Helen's home on the way. I remember this year the high schoolers sprayed the words, Old Hag Harrison, on the garage door. I remember feeling bad for her, despite the underlying layer of fear I felt whenever we would pass by her property. Despite all of the heartless and immature vandalism that would take place in October, Helen's home would get cleaned up to be damn near immaculate. By the time Thanksgiving rolled around, her home would be prepped and decorated for the Christmas season ready to be plugged in to illuminate every corner, window, and door. Even as a young boy, I remember thinking how crazy and impressive it was that she was able to put up all the decorations herself. At least, I assumed she was doing it herself. In all those years, no one mentioned a relative stopping by Helen's place. No grandkids, no children of her own, no cousins, nephews, nieces. Hell, I don't even remember seeing so much as a friend's car in the driveway. In addition to her festive light display, this was the only time she ever seemed to come out of her home for any prolonged period of time. At that point, I had been walking home with the same group of friends to and from school for a couple of years. We knew by then we had to either find a new route or accept that we would likely be approached by Helen. Every time we passed by, she would wave us over. Being the good, small-town boys we were, we cautiously approached the edge of the chain-link fence that surrounded her yard. There, she would be donning a heavy sweater that would be worn with irony at a house party nowadays. The bright red and green wool did little to distract from her appearance. The image of Helen Harrison will always be burned into my memory. Her long, gray, stringy hair draped down to her lower back. Her wrinkled skin was pale, except for the patches of liver spots that stained her neck, arms, and hands. 
Those same hands led to some of the dirtiest and most unkempt fingernails I had ever seen. It was easy to see why people assumed such horrific things of her. Would you boys like some Christmas cookies? I just pulled them out of the oven, she offered as she held out her baking tray. I stared at the sugar-coated morsels that laid before me. We kindly refused, which was a no-brainer. It may have been a small town in the 90s, but stranger danger was a real thing. Taking sweets from strangers is pretty much a red flag, regardless of how delicious they may have looked. I genuinely was appreciative of her offer, but I had to respectfully decline. I thanked her, wishing her a Merry Christmas before catching up with my friends who were already walking off. Every couple of days, Helen would be there with a new batch of cookies. She would call us over, offer us the cookies, and we would decline. Eventually, we just started walking past her, waving a friendly hello and shouting no thank you from a distance. A couple of weeks prior to all of this, sometime in the middle of November, our small class was introduced to our newest classmate, Kelly. Kelly was small and shy, regularly staring at her feet when she spoke while playing with her curly blonde hair and the vibrant pink ribbons that adorned it. One of the unfortunate things about living in a small town like ours is that secrets rarely ever stayed safe. It wasn't long after Kelly moved to Rocky Hill that my classmates were abuzz with her backstory. Kelly was from a broken home. Her deadbeat dad ran out on the house, leaving her mother alone to take care of her. Kelly's mom was not exactly an angel herself, and her story was that she was a druggie. Looking back now, it was clear that Kelly had all the telltale signs of neglect. That didn't fully dawn on me back then, but I was still very sympathetic towards her. I would do my best to be nice whenever we crossed paths, lending her school supplies here and there, and letting her sit with us at lunch. With that said, I don't want to make it sound like I was a saint. She sat with us, but we rarely ever talked to her. She kind of just kept her head down and quietly ate her small, unhealthy lunches, mostly consisting of chips and cookies. Eventually, she began walking behind my group of friends and me on her way to and from school. She lived in our neighborhood, so it wasn't too weird. But again, no real interactions were made. She just shadowed behind us, about 10 or 15 feet. I'm not proud of ignoring her the way we did. But what can I say? Kids are shitty. We all were worried that we would be bullied or ostracized if we became too buddy-buddy with her. You know, I remember one of those days, Helen Harrison made another sales pitch to us to try her cookies. We declined per usual, but as we walked away, I looked back to see Kelly reaching over and grabbing a few of the treats. The smile that wrapped around Helen's face was one of the biggest I've ever seen. She slowly nodded her head as Kelly took a bite, returning the smile. The whole scene made my skin crawl a little bit, but it made sense. Kelly was new, so she was ignorant of all the tall tales that surrounded Helen. She also, most likely, received little to no positive attention from adults. And now, here was this seemingly sweet old lady extending a welcoming hand to offer her cookies. I can't think of many kids in her situation that would have acted differently. 
It was a week before we were officially on our two week long Christmas break when Kelly stopped showing up for class. Within a couple of days, word had spread of her disappearance. Her mother had reported her missing after she had gotten home from a late shift at work and found that she was not home. Missing signs and have you seen me posters began popping up everywhere. And we had police officers come in to talk to us about staying safe and whatnot. As you can guess, it put a damper on the warm, fuzzy feeling Christmas usually brings. Despite what happened, we were still allowed to walk to and from school. Our parents agreed, as long as we stayed in our group of five to six kids, went to and from school, and called them as soon as we were home, it shouldn't be a problem. Eventually, Friday afternoon arrived. We were walking home for what would be the last time until the new year. What should have been a walk brimming with the electric energy due to the prospect of our long break was dulled down to a quiet hike. The week had been rough for us. We were still young, and none of us had experienced anything like this. In our head, kids didn't just disappear. Kids were supposed to be safe. Our town was supposed to be safe. It was during this somber walk that we were approached once again by Helen. Christmas is right around the corner. Would you like some Christmas cookies? I've been practicing all month long, she declared, displaying a fresh batch of cookies. We stared down at them. The practice must have been paying off because these looked immaculate, even compared to the first cookie she had offered us a couple of weeks prior. The warm gingerbread men exuded an inviting scent of cinnamon, while the vanilla frosting gave off a vague hint of maple. We all looked at each other with the obvious temptation in our eyes. One of my friends made the first move, extending a hand and taking hold of one of the cookies. We all followed suit, grabbing a cookie for ourselves. We looked at each other again before taking a bite. The same friend who led the charge on grabbing the cookies bit into his. He took a few chews before looking up at Helen and smiling. Very good, Miss Harrison, he said, tiny crumbs spilling from his mouth. At that point, we put aside our uncertainty and bit into our cookies. He was right. They were pretty tasty. I took my second bite. Immediately, I knew something was off. The texture was wrong. I let out a slight gag and stuck out my other hand to spit the contents out of my mouth. As I tried to rid my mouth of the partially chewed cookie, I found the stringy texture becoming more prominent and hard to remove. When I finally took to scraping it out, I stared at the wet combination of mush and crumbs. Amongst it all were strands of long, curly, blonde hair. I stared up at my friends in shock. They too returned disturbed looks of confusion. One by one, they snapped their cookies in half. Not only did they find more strands of blonde hair, but pieces of shredded up ribbon. The same type and color that Kelly always wore. I don't know how long we stood there, frozen in fear but we eventually were awoken by the sinister cackling to our side. 
on the other side of the fence, <laughs> Helen stood, laughing so hard she dropped the remaining cookies onto the ground. Upon seeing her in this deranged state, we all bolted away, making a mad dash for the nearest of our houses. As soon as we got inside, our parents were called. Our parents immediately called the police and returned home. There was a police raid at Helen's home. While inside, they stumbled upon a lot of blood-curdling discoveries. But worse than everything, worse than the filth, worse than the evidence of unknown rituals carved into the walls, worse than the partially dissected animal cadavers, was the discovery of Kelly's body. She was found lying in Helen's kitchen. I don't want to get into detail about the state she was in. What scared me the most, though, was that among everything they found that day, Helen was not one of them. She apparently fled before the police arrived. Her car was still in the garage. I couldn't and still can't understand how a lady that old and decrepit would be able to flee on foot. But she did. Authorities searched for months, and nothing ever came of it. Helen Harrison got away with murder. So here I am, writing this today. That event traumatized my friends and me, and shook our little town to its core. We never could imagine something so grim happening in Rocky Hill. I've since moved on, moved out of the state, and started a family of my own. The memory of Helen comes to mind every Christmas for a passing moment. But earlier today, it came back harder than I would have ever hoped for. My son came inside after playing out in the snow. Through the dense layers of coats, scarves, and gloves, I noticed he was holding something and bearing a wide smile. I grabbed for it out of instinct. He was holding a gingerbread cookie. A gingerbread cookie that looked awfully too familiar. Thank you for listening, and I hope you enjoyed this special Christmas story. Guys, I had a chance to read this story live in front of a crowd for an open mic night, and um, a lot of them were not aware of this channel or the subculture of the horror narrations of YouTube. <laughs> Let's just say um, people thought I was pretty weird, and uh, they were pretty disgusted with me. So I'm hoping, you know, you guys enjoyed it. <laughs> if you did, let me know down below. Smash that thumbs up. And I just want to wish everybody a very Merry Christmas. I hope you're spending it with loved ones uh, if you celebrate. And um, have a Happy New Year as well. I'll be posting the last video of 2019 a week from today. Uh, it'll be a New Year's video, so I'm looking forward to that as well. But until then, everybody, remember to stay safe out there. I'll be seeing you in the next video.